Howdy folks, today we are looking at the Lepi LP2020A. This is one of the low end offerings. Uh, this was one of the first real knockoffy knockoffs. I, this one doesn't have a tripath chip if I recall correctly. It's got a Yamaha something or other in there. But uh, let's open it up and see what we're really working with here. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's right. They uh, rebranded the chip on this thing. Let's see if we can get some focus here. Yeah, they actually uh, made a quote unquote Lepi chip. There you go, the LP2020A. Sorry for the uh, motion sickness going on here. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, LP2020A has its own chip. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go look up what this thing actually is and uh, put it down in the description so y'all can y'all can see. But uh, definitely not a uh, definitely not a tripath. All right. So let's uh, do a little bit of testing and see what it can do. All right, so the tone control on this one uh, has a little bit, a uh, little bit of odd behavior. It seems like when the uh, when the tone controls are enabled, you know, when this is this is active, it's got some kind of a limiter on the top end on the treble. It won't overdrive it, but when you turn the tone control off, it does overdrive the treble, and then. The other side of it is that uh, with the tone control on, it drives the bass hard, but not. But then with the tone control off, it doesn't drive the bass hard. The bass will just barely uh, distort at the top end. Uh, I want to do one more little test here, actually. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The uh, the treble tone control doesn't have a whole lot of impact. It looks like it's making about uh, one decibel of change from all the way maxed out to all the way bottomed out. And it definitely has more treble power at the top end with the tone control disabled completely. So yeah, something something's weird there. I don't know if it's deliberate or if it's a fluke with this particular copy or I don't know what's going on there, but uh, it fits in with the not super high quality amplifier thing going on here. So let's compare this with the with our our baseline and see how the see how the numbers line up. All right, so twelve volts. Let's see, it actually does a little bit better than the uh, 2020A plus getting up to 71 as opposed to uh, right about 70. Then uh, on the high end, it doesn't do nearly as well because it's maxing out at 107. It looks like if I defeat the tone, I was getting up around uh, 111, 112, that same range, but you would never 
you know, people aren't going to defeat the tone because anybody who buys these little amps is going to like the, uh, the base boost of having the, having the tone control enabled. So it's got a uh, lower power on the top end because of whatever that limiter going on is. So bumping up to 13 volts, we're looking at uh, 73 decibels versus 70 and 75 versus 72. Let's see how this thing stacks with uh, some of the ones with, with better stats. Let's see who's in the, who's in the list here. Yeah, comparing it with the Kinter. Let's see, 73 versus 71. <clears throat> I'm looking, oh yeah, of course it's not gonna, not gonna stack against the 2051. Let's see, comparing it with the TI. It's a TI, it's not quite as good as that. I'm curious that the uh, that the specs come out claiming that it's better than the 2020A plus because it definitely doesn't sound as good as the 2020A plus. So maybe we'll play around with that a little bit with uh, different speakers and some musicality testing later on. But for now, you know the numbers are what they are. So I guess it does indeed test out a little bit stronger before distortion than the uh, original 2020 at least on, you know, driving the, the load that we've got here. So like every time, I will add the data to the big data table, which will be linked below, and we will see you in the next one.